Let's stand together, everybody. Amen. Lift our heart to the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We appreciate your kindness. We love you, Lord, for your blessedness. We appreciate your good word, God, that finds us and helps us. I love you today, Jesus. Magnify your name, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We don't want to we don't want to wear out here today. There's good things yet to come. It's evening service, preaching of the word, and uh, I don't want you to fall asleep on me. Praise God. I do appreciate what I have been hearing and uh, especially what I have been feeling in the Lord. And uh, I'm a, I want to walk very carefully uh, through the next couple of moments what I say. But, you know, thinking men and praying men, if you're careful in the Lord, you pick up a lot of signals. You just do. We become sensitive to the Spirit. And the things that have been preached here in this meeting have been those things that for me personally I have been meditating thinking on considering feeling after and it just seems like in the Holy Ghost the Lord has put it all together in a very neat package called Path Conference it's just been exceptional and uh, I heard a man use this term one time and it stuck with me what we have been hearing here what we heard this morning is Cadillac Bible teaching and preaching it's just that far above average and uh, a lot has been said about various places and going and Brother John's uh, poked at us about the smoke machine and and uh going places like that and brother Hearn said I don't understand that and I I uh, gave a little rejoinder I don't understand going to places like that I personally have never seen that I know it I know it's happening because I've heard about it but personally I've never seen it I've never been in a meeting where the young people were so spiritually inept that they rushed the platform and gave one another high fives and were applauding themselves over their response to what they considered to be good oratory. I don't attend meetings like that, but I will tell you that this kind of a meeting here builds something. I thought about, I thought about this. I, I do understand your standing, but I'm doing it on purpose. We've been sitting for a while, but I do, I, I was thinking on this this morning that PATH Conference has, has a far greater effect than just simply uh, a, a, a meeting for Faith Tabernacle and uh, its regulars. But this meeting, as I have observed and feel like I've discerned in my spirit, is affecting an entire region of yeah. ministry and people and I'm grateful I want to say that I'm very grateful very thankful for the path conference and uh, I want to thank you brother Garza for having the vision and the passion and I want to thank you for your spirit that is felt and uh, for the touch of God that is allowed in this place amen can you say praise the Lord this is a good meeting a very good meeting I want to say thank you for the room and also thank you for the basket. I don't know who's responsible, but um, uh, I don't know. I'm going home with more than I brought, and uh, I do appreciate very much. I appreciate the invitation to come, and I said it the other night, and I just want to say it one more time. To be here once is awesome. To be here twice, I use the word astounding as the elder used last night, but thank you very much. The ministry that's represented here, some of my heroes in the faith are in this house. 
some men who are legends in their own time because of their strong stance through the years are in this house. And also in this house and part of this meeting are men that we will be hearing from in time to come. And I'm very thankful. I really appreciate the ministry. I want to give honor one more time to my pastor, Elder Morton. He is a presence in this area. He came here in 1972, and uh, I promise you that that man prayed a hole in heaven, and especially for the Garrett family, prayed a hole in heaven. And uh, you don't mess with a man that knows how to touch God. You just, you, you just, if you don't like him, don't say it. Amen. Because he's got something going on with the Holy Ghost that you better leave him alone. Praise God. And I appreciate my pastor and love him. In this house today are my parents, my mother and my father, and uh, I love them more than I have words to express, and uh, I could get real maudlin and cry a little bit here, but uh, I sure do love my folks, and I appreciate the respect and the honor that he, my father, has shown, and of course, he wouldn't be quite the man he is without the wife that he married, and I love my mother. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Hearn, for preaching to me. You helped me. Thank you, Brother White for taking such good skill in the word of the Lord. And uh, I wish I could do that. Brother Davis, you're one of my favorites, and I appreciate uh, God has given us a good friendship, and I appreciate that. And Brother Johns, the next time you get bothered by the word of God, I really want to be there <laughs> and hear it. You helped us today. You, you really helped us today. And I'm standing here thinking really what ought to be going on right now is, is an altar service where we're just kind of soaking this in because it's that rich and that deep. Praise God. And uh, I re I've been several places in my lifetime and heard men when they delivered something for the first time that came to their heart. And it seems to me like that's the richest, the best. And today was absolutely, absolutely wonderful praise God and I'm going to try to do my part I left last night to go to the room early I was being troubled in my spirit and uh, I did not stay for the fellowship not because I don't enjoy fellowship but because I was troubled I went to bed late still troubled I woke up quite early this morning and uh, I have been awake now for many many hours and I'm still troubled in my soul I really want the Lord to help us. And I'd like to just kind of hook my little wagon to this steam train that's already rolling and uh, just say I appreciate and I want to be a help to the kingdom of the Lord. One more time to the ministry. I love you, brethren. I need you, brethren. I thank God for the fivefold ministry. I'm glad there are still apostles, there are prophets. Somebody said we're a not-for-profit group. No, we are a prophet-oriented group. We believe in prophets. That was pretty weak. I will say it my way then. I believe in prophets. And I still believe in evangelists. And I believe in pastors and teachers. And I don't believe that that is a, a descending order of importance as it's listed by the apostle. But I do believe it is his, his revelation of the work of the Lord. And there's nothing like God's plan. Praise God. And uh, to our evangelists, we sure do love you and, and uh, we need your help. Don't quit. Praise God. And there's one evangelist here that's been at our place and uh, not a stranger to a, a large majority of this congregation, but I just want to recommend him today, Brother Michael West. And uh, what a man. What a preacher. And he ought to be up here preaching today. You'd hear something. But instead, it's me. If you have your Bibles, I want to direct your attention to the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 2. I'm going to take my time, if I might, this morning. I know that I am often uh, characterized as passionate. I will be passionate, I'm certain. I cannot preach this word without the passion of the word affecting me, but I, I want to go slower if I can. Um, no promises, but if I 
can. Praise God. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. I want to stop long enough to insert this, that in my tenure of life, I've never seen the conditions for me personally more ripe, more ready for the man of sin. We are in such chaos and confusion that if somebody came on the scene and said, I've got answers and they worked, the whole world would go crazy right now. We're living there. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And in our Bible, that is capital G-O-D. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. And my text will be from verse number 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Let's pray together that God will help us. We love you, Jesus. We appreciate you. My spirit and my heart belong to you. This is a great people. Your great men are in this house. Chosen vessels, God. They've gone far, far, far beyond most. I pray, God, that you would give us an unction from the Spirit and help us today, God, to be sensitive to your Word and your Spirit. Lead us. Guide us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will thank you, Lord. And everybody together said amen. amen. And you may be seated. Praise God. I am, I am aware that I stand between you and lunch. So I will, I will be careful concerning that. I know that uh, on Wednesday night uh, we didn't stay long behind the pulpit. And uh, Brother Hearn yesterday said that he was taking that extra time. Reminds me of a time many years ago when uh, my mother was quite ill with what they call valley fever. My father was driving a Sunday school bus and I was quite young, my sister just a year older. We were walking home from Sunday school and uh, we had been given a donut. It was a glazed donut. And uh, if you were raised in the circumstances in which we were raised, uh, that was one more rare, rare treat. And I wanted that glazed donut. My mouth watered for it. But I didn't feel like eating it at that moment. And we were walking home from church, and uh, I got sick. And uh, I laid down on the sidewalk because I was so sick. And my sister didn't know what to do. And... Strangers came by and, and uh, picked us up. I don't remember the car ride home. I was so sick. Got into the house, and I do remember my mother taking my donut, putting it up on the refrigerator. Well, it was several days before I was well enough to want that donut. But uh, when I went looking and asking about that donut, uh, it wasn't there. And uh, it would have been stale anyhow, but my childish mind couldn't get around that. And um, I'm a little warped because of that. And uh, there's not a donut shop across the nation that I'm not familiar with. 
I missed my calling. I should have been a police officer, but anyway. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, Brother Hearn, I went looking for my time, and it was gone. Amen. And it might have been stale anyhow, but praise God. So uh, I don't want to take uh, an inordinate amount of time here. This is, this is on my mind today, and I've learned that when the itch is there that we ought to scratch it, especially in the spirit. I was praying last Sunday morning. We had a guest speaker, and so I was not praying for a message. I was just in the study, as is my custom. It was my personal devotion to the Lord, and the Lord began to burden my heart. And uh, I thought about this meeting. And uh, as I was thinking about this meeting, some thoughts began to roll through my mind. And uh, I was writing as I was meditating and thinking on the Lord. And uh, since I have been here at this meeting, almost everything that I had put down has been covered, all of it. And uh, last night, uh, even my scriptures were read and uh, all of it so I said to myself self either you missed it or you get to come back and maybe cinch it up a little bit so I think perhaps what I'm going to do here today is just kind of cinch up some things if I can iniquity is the root of all sin iniquity was the original sin because we've covered it and others have covered it, I will not cover it here again this morning, but Ezekiel 28, 13 through 15 again deals with Lucifer and the scripture concludes till iniquity was found in thine heart. In Isaiah again, it was iniquity. Genesis 3, 1 through 6 is the temptation of Eve by that serpent we heard about yesterday more subtle than any beast of the field. And the question that he placed in the mind of Eve was, Yea, hath God said? It was questioning. And uh, ye shall not surely die, perverting the word of the Lord, and then placing a lie, ye shall be as God's small g, and uh, you shall you shall know you got the right then to make up your own mind. But the consequence of that of that original sin was expulsion from God. It was cast out of heaven. It was cast into the earth, and uh, then cast out of the garden. And cast into the earth that became cursed because of the iniquity. Iniquity uh, is like a cancer that spreads. We hear the dreaded C word and uh, most of us get pretty nervous. Uh, I, don't, I don't like it. But iniquity in, in a church, in a life, in a family sometimes becomes like a cancer that if it's unchecked somebody doesn't take the time to identify it and deal with it and uh, step right up to it and confront iniquity uh, it'll spread it'll it'll soon take over Matthew 24 and 12 the Bible said because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold. So let a little iniquity get loose in our lives, uh, a little rebellion against God, a uh, little high-mindedness on our part, and uh, the love of many shall wax cold. I thought it so, so well put this morning by Elder Johns that not worrying about the external. Some folks, some folks think that it is entirely difficult to get a congregation to conform to the standard or the law of the church. I'm just going to be honest with you and tell you that I haven't found that to be so. 
but I have found the truth in trying to help them to stay right in their spirit. I've had folks that have backslid and been backslid for many years that have not changed their style of dress. Women have never put the scissors in their hair, never see them with makeup on their face, but they're just eaten up with a, an iniquitous spirit that produces in them things that are just horrid. And everything they seem to touch is tainted by that. I have some relatives that I love, and this is probably sensitive to my family, but, but uh, some of them have not changed their appearance in many years as far as their holiness. They used to live here in the valley, go to the same church that we went to, sat under the same pastor that we sat under, Heard the same teaching that, that I cut my teeth on and got the convictions in my spirit from. And uh, yet today they are so far from God, so far from truth, so far from right. And their families are, are disintegrating and it's, it's terrible to watch it. But it was iniquity. Iniquity took one third of the angels from heaven. It spreads. It spreads. Iniquity took one third with Lucifer. Iniquity took Adam as well as Eve. Paul the Apostle writing said that it was not Adam that was deceived in the transgression. Heard one man say, and, and I have a tendency to agree, that, that he looked at that bride that had been given to him by the Lord. And so he could not bear to see her thrust out alone. So going with her into iniquity. It took Adam as well as Eve. Iniquity can tear up a home quicker than anything I know. Iniquity will subvert entire houses. An unsubmitted man will tear his family up. Take them away from God. Iniquity in the heart. I've seen the husband and the wife affected by one member. Children that would have lived for God are taken away because of iniquity. And then I've seen churches go into apostasy that used to love this truth and honor and magnify the Lord. My mind this morning thinks about, thinks about places that in my early formative years of ministry right here in California that I would travel with the elder and we'd go to some of those churches where there were strong men gathering men like are here today and yet today you can't find those places some of them no longer are recognized as a church much less an apostolic church some of them no longer uh, have it, the buildings that were erected by good godly men. And uh, now they're just meeting in what almost seems like a nightclub atmosphere because iniquity got into the congregation. I hope I'm not going too slow. And the church, the church got into apostasy. Our text today talks about a falling away and uh, we have lived long enough to see that day come and uh, I'm beginning to believe that Pentecost is not nearly as large as some folks would like to profess that it is and uh, I'm beginning to believe that apostolic Pentecost particularly is becoming more and more and more narrowly defined by the message that we preach, this Acts 2.38 message, this, this one God message, this separation from the world message that we call holiness. And my, my pastor likes to call it holiness within and holiness without. And yet, as we live long enough, we are seeing that it's just not that large. And there is around us a falling away. In most places, preaching against television, is, uh, it, it's gone the way of uh, buggy whips and gone the way of, 
of team of oxen that's no longer even an issue in a lot of places that are called Pentecost because, because of iniquity that has entered in. That falling away is happening around us. My, my journey today is not to preach to those or even to try to speak to those who are not here. There's very little that I can do personally that will affect them. This is a very narrow uh, attended meeting. This is a gathering of, of some real men of God. And so there's folks that not only will they not attend, but they're not interested if you send them the CDs. They don't care. They won't hear what was said this morning, much to their own harm and hurt. But, but uh, so I'm saying that I can do nothing for those who are not in attendance. And so I am not reaching today to try and describe those who don't care and will not be here and that we cannot help them because they refuse our help. But I've got something on my mind for us. I got something working on my spirit for we who are here today. And I'm going to include me in that mix. I'm not going to exclude myself. I don't enjoy listening to a man who will invite us to do something that he will not do himself. I don't want to hear a man preach who will lay down the law for others and you find out later he has no concept or obedience to the very word he preaches. That man's a liar. I don't want to follow him. I'm not interested. Praise God. Amen. If you follow that kind of an individual, you end up in the proverbial ditch, as the scripture says. And so I'm not interested in that. But I am interested today in preaching to this congregation, speaking to us, and speaking to myself also. God, help us. God, help us. God, help us. That iniquity not fall into our ranks. That it not come to you and I, that it not visit my home, that it not come to my marriage, that it not visit the church that I pastor. I want something to get in my spirit today. We've already heard it. I, I feel tender. I feel, I feel broken up on the inside of my spirit here today. And I'm willing for God to do a work on me. I want a pure mind. I want a pure heart. I want a pure spirit. I want to do right. I really do. I get around brother and sister Minna, and uh, I immediately, it's like, it's like getting into a room where somebody does this, and immediately you start, you know, checking, you looking for a mirror to see if it's all right. I get around brother and sister Minna, and I feel the purity. I watched them last night, couldn't help but see them. They're in my line of vision, that from the very beginning of the service until the service is completely finished, they were enraptured in worship and honor and magnifying the Lord. I want that kind of purity to get on my mind. I want that kind of purity to get in my spirit. And we've already heard it. The only way that it's going to happen is for us to get a place where we develop a relationship with God. Speaking to Him. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Not because we want a message. Not, oh, not because we want to have another good service. Not but because we want to walk with him in the day. Praise God. My pastor called me recently, and at the conclusion of our conversation, he said, Ronnie, he said, preachers need to pray every day. And so uh, I said, yes, sir. And I, I've tried to make that my habit in my lifetime, but it just reinforced something in my mind. And if I were tempted or even thought about for just a little while, I hear that sound in the back of my mind that, Ronnie, preachers ought to pray every day. And then he said, get up and go to the church and pray every day. Amen. If I want that relationship with God, then and only then will the purity of the Spirit manifest itself in my life. Do you want it? Come on, do you want that? I believe we want it. Let's ask him for it right now. God help us. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Our text today says these words that, that he showing himself. He's sitting in the temple of God. Verse number four. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. God. Or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. Showing himself that he is God. That's a mouthful from the word of the Lord and from the heart of the Apostle Paul. Revelation 21 and 3 tells us that behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he shall dwell with them and they shall be his people. In verse number 2 in Revelation 21 he said come and I will show thee the bride. And then he said the tabernacle of God is with men. He shall dwell with them and shall they shall be his people. Paul the apostle writing 1 Corinthians 3.16 said, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? Don't you know that? 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Paul writing again, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. And yet the text said that this, this anti-God, this anti-Christ, this, this man of sin who shall be revealed who opposeth, exalted himself above all that is called God. He is showing himself that he is God. The spirit of iniquity, that mystery, already working. I will be, I am God. And the temple that belongs to God. I'm going to rule that temple. I am going to. Amen. I'm going to be God in that temple. I feel the unction of the spirit. Praise God. Cain was such a man. That refused evidently. God reaching for him. And when his punishment for his dastardly deeds was met. And he was driven from the presence of the Lord. He said, it's more than I can bear. And yet, it was iniquity that placed him there. I got a phone call this morning. I thought it very ironic that these thoughts would be in my mind. And it was a preacher a preacher who preached among us. A preacher who, who shared uh, the pulpit that I preached from. A preacher that, that, uh, that I loved with all of my heart. But today he is totally backslidden. He is divorcing his wife. He is angry because his children want to live for God. And they want to serve the Lord. And they are sitting in a good apostolic church. At least I hope it is. And uh, they want to do right. And this man is angry because they have no desire to do business with him anymore. His children are all in their teenage years and heading into their 20s. And they don't want to fool with him anymore. Iniquity did that. Somewhere in his life, he lost the fear of God. Somewhere he accepted in his own life that he was impervious to those impure thoughts and the idea that he should be subject to God and to God's anointed word and to God's anointed ministry. And somewhere he got off track and he's lost 
today. I don't know if he'll come back. I don't know if he can come back. The last time that I visited with him and tried to help him, I almost felt like the Holy Ghost. As a matter of fact, I had time to spend more time with him in hopes that I could persuade him. But as I was driving in the car with him and he was pouring out his vileness and the bile in his spirit, I felt like the Lord just lifted my burden from him. And I left many, many hours earlier, several days earlier than I would have left because of iniquity. Esau trivialized important things from God in such a measure that though he had the promise, I want to walk careful right here, though he had that promise, as it were, in the bag, though he had the commitment of the birthright already to be handed to him, and though the eyes of his father were waxing dim, and the day of his coronation, of the opportunity to handle that birthright and to pass it to his own posterity he trivialized uh, those important things by his loose talk and his loose living and his presumptiveness about the things that had eternal value to God and as a result of that though he carefully sought to be to be restored to birthright and to that anointing again it was important Possible for that man to be restored. And the scripture records that God hated him. I am convinced and I am submitting today that it was because that iniquity got in his spirit and he was not willing to deal with it. And while it's on my mind, I feel like that Esau occupied that exalted position of privilege. And in that exalted position of privilege, uh, he felt like his language uh, was excusable. And he felt like his behavior was excusable. And I feel like that somehow we have reached that day again to where there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on in apostolic Pentecost. And in the ranks of the supposedly undefiled. And yet I am Finding among them a great sadness and a great fear that grips my heart. I worked instruction for a number of years here in the San Joaquin Valley. I was on from the beginning to the end of the dam project right out here on the Chowchilla River, I believe it's called. And, and uh, I ran an air track drill and uh, spent hours and days and months and and uh, somewhere now that I found favor with them. And the first, the first time that we blasted in the rock quarry, I was laying under a compressor just a few hundred yards away from that mountain as we blew it up. And so uh, I worked those, 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 those jobs. And I heard a lot of stuff. And you work with a lot of filthy-minded individuals. But I've come here today to tell you that in Pentecost, it, and in apostolic Pentecost, I'm hearing far too many shady things. And I'm way ahead of myself. And I'm sorry, but uh, it's on my heart. I'm, I'm hearing things that have double entendres. And I'm hearing things that have a little connotation connected to them. And my spirit is grieved. And, and I'm somehow feeling that the spirit of iniquity is, is at work. And then maybe, 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 just maybe, maybe. Maybe somehow the warning can be sounded in this building today and oh, the Holy Ghost can reach down and, and stir something up in us again that, to covet that purity of mind uh, and spirit and say, oh God, uh, I don't know where I left that altar. I, I don't know where I left my first works and I don't know where I got away from the simplicity and I got away from the brokenness. But if you're gonna, if you'll help anybody today, God, uh, I want you to take me back uh, to that place, oh God, where purity reigned uh, in my spirit and I wanted you more than I wanted anything. Hallelujah. Oh God. 
I feel the Holy Ghost so rich and so real that I'm going to cut through a whole lot of this today and, and I'm going to pass up a lot, of, a lot of written notes if you don't mind. And, and I feel very strong that we're going to have quite an altar service here today. Amen. Amen. I am my own God. The rules don't apply to me. My opinion is important above others. And, and once I've set my own mind, nobody can come and help me to change my mind. Amen. 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 Iniquity. 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 The Saul was anointed king over the people of God. And yet the day came when Samuel walks into his presence and and says you're done and uh, I'm going to give this kingdom according to the word of the Lord to a man that's more worthy than yourself and yet it was ten long years of, of Saul still sitting on the throne and Saul still enjoying the benefits of his position but it was ten years of, of slowly fading away from the presence of the Lord until at the end, the only thing that Saul had left, uh, amen, was a wicked witch of Endor and a dead pastor in his life. Uh, and there was no effect in him any longer. He could no longer find God or feel after God. It took a long time from the inception of his iniquitous rebellion against God from the exaltation of his position upon the throne, anointed and placed there by God. It took ten long years before he is slain by the sword and dies a coward's death running for his life. I feel this today. I, I didn't intend to get this loud and this aggressive, but, but I feel it anyhow. The passion of it is burning in my spirit. Uh, oh God, I wonder what's going on. Uh, I wonder what's happening right now. I, I wonder who's sitting in this building right now that's allowed some things in your life. Uh, you've been toying with the doctrine. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. Uh, you've been playing with this Acts 238 message. Uh, you're not putting the significance up and the importance on it that the word of God places upon it. Acts 2.38 doesn't mean to you what it used to mean. You're making exceptions for others. Amen. They possibly going to have a chance outside of this Acts 2.38 message. My God preacher what's happened to your mind? My God preacher what's going on in your spirit? Oh Lord preacher what are you going to do? about your relationship with God if Acts 2.38 is not the preeminent message of salvation there is no message of salvation and Christ died in vain if his blood cannot wash us and save us and cleanse us if a polytheistic ideology about God is acceptable to you and they're going to serve God in their quote own way and you serve God in quote your way then then this Bible you might as well wrap it up uh, and put it on a shelf somewhere and throw away throw away your 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 credential whatever that might be uh, and throw away your calling because you're just as gone uh, as if we've already had your funeral uh, you're just as gone uh, oh I feel the Holy Ghost uh, as if we've already stood by your so your church and watched it go away uh, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Somebody is flirting with the wrong stuff. Somebody's messing with the wrong thing. Somebody's got it on their mind. And you're headed in the wrong direction by the help of the Holy Ghost. Would you get a hold of yourself? Would you turn your mind around? Would you get back to an altar? Would you fall in love with the purity of the Word again? Would you seek God? Would you seek after His Spirit? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And when I think about this long goodbye, I obviously have to take a look at and remember what caused it and what brought him to that place. And how did he drift so far? And I think about him, and I know this has turned a little odd this morning, and 
I can't help it. I can't help it. I promised God today I would speak for him. If it cost me friendships, I promised that I would speak for him. Hallelujah. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You haven't been to Endor yet, but you're going there, Saul. You have not set in her home yet and set in on her seance, but you will. Amen. For rebellion is as witchcraft. I, I, I don't know why but I feel drawn this way this morning, but, but there is nothing as odious to a God-called apostolic ministry than a rebellious, know-it-all preacher that nobody can help that's got an opinion about everything and everybody and doesn't want to hear anybody say anything that crosses his opinion. There's nothing as dangerous as a man that feels like I am the epitome of all that is good. Oh, God, help us. Oh, God, help us. What happened to that spirit of ye younger? Be submitted to elders. What happened to that spirit of ye elders? Be submitted one to another. Oh, ikoto to pokoshi hamamakaya. Let's pray right now. <laughs> Oh God. Oh God. Hallelujah. 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 I I hesitate. But I feel prompted in my spirit. Amen. This will probably rise up and bite me. There's a man that I love. A man that I have I've put a lot into. Had a lot of desire. I could go into the story, but it's not even necessary. But I remember when he was sitting in a, 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 a meeting. And something that was said from the pulpit. Um, it jarred me. It did. It jarred me. And uh, it's one of those deals where you say, well, and uh, I don't believe I'd have said it that way. And uh, so I just, I just marked it in my mind. And uh, I, just, I just marked it in my mind. But this man that I loved, he being the younger, sat down at the keyboard and he fired off a scathing, blistering letter. And uh, I didn't know about it. He was the younger, fired it off to an elder, a prominent elder. And uh, I got a phone call. Hey. And I said, I have, have no idea. I'm, I'm, I'm in the dark. And so I began to watch. It wasn't long. We had a situation, and Elder D.C. Moody was in our pulpit preaching. And, and again, a little something unfolded. It wasn't much. We worked it out. But the, the reaction and the overreaction and the building it out of, out of proportion, just blowing it up until it separated. And it wasn't, it wasn't my desire for the separation. It just happened. 
just happened. It was on the other part. But I watched. And I watched. And the blessing left. And the favor of God left. And looked like the anointing left. And it became replaced by, by frenzied music. It's the only way I know to describe it. Frenzied music. And brother, they could shout. And I would preach over there and, and it just was miserable to me in my spirit. But that became the substitute for that favor that used to be. Until today, there's only a handful left. And it is so rife with intrigue and, and filth and ungodliness that I despair. I despair. How do you get it back? How, how, how do you go in and resurrect that again? And, and I look at it. And it hurts. And I wonder how do you do this? How do you get it back? How do you make this live again? When it won't live. And I use that only this morning as an example. In Luke 9 and 55, the Bible tells us that Jesus has come from the Mount of Transfiguration. Those disciples have woken up and they have, they have seen and they have experienced. And they come down to a young man that's casting himself into the fire and trying to cast himself into the waters. And he's taken by a spirit. And the Lord rebukes him. And the disciples are astonished. And then they go from that. It's astonishing to me. And they start arguing among themselves as to who should be the greatest. Something here is, is out of balance. They've just come from absolute heaven on earth. Let's build tabernacles up here. This is, this is fantastic. This is, this is great. And they come right down to the casting out and the deliverance of a soul and which is supposed to be their ministry. And then they go from that immediately into puffing their chest out, patting themselves on the back. And the Lord discerning it takes a child, sets in the midst. And, and then he says something to them that I'm going to be delivered up to men. And again, they miss the whole point. He's trying to give them clues and insights to what this ministry is going to be all about. It's going to be heavenly places and going to be victories in the presence of the Lord. And it's going to have, it's going to have great, great, great consequence to people coming out and being loosed and delivered. It's going to be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But not everybody's going to like you. And not everybody's going to accept you. And not everybody's going to appreciate you. And yet somehow in their mind they still got privilege on their mind. And they, they still got their mind set on things that are far beyond what the Lord is trying to put in them and help them with. And then he sets his face to go to Jerusalem. And they come to a city in Samaria. And the Lord sends in advance and says prepare for the master. But they see his face as it would go to Jerusalem and they won't receive him. And the words out of their mouth are, let's call fire as did Elijah. Let's consume them all. And the Lord said something there that has captured my mind today. He rebuked them and he said, you know not what spirit you are of. They're in the inner circle. They're walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. They're observing heaven on earth. They're observing the benefit of walking with him in the spirit. The ministry unfolded before them. They have learned not to put preeminence on themselves. And they're going to be rejected by some. But come on, there's a job to be done. And yet the Lord has to stop. And say your spirit is all messed up. 
Romans chapter 9 or Romans chapter 8 teaches us that, or 9 and 10 I believe it is, that, that if any have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And I've been thinking on that. That's what got my attention last Sunday morning. Have not the Spirit of Christ. We heard it last night. I know what it's talking about. I know it's talking about the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. I understand that. But could I make an application to us here today that when we received that baptism of the Holy Ghost, it became Christ in us, the hope of glory. When we stand before Him, we're going to be judged by the books that are open. And when those books are open, He's going to be looking at us to see what's in us by what He placed in us. Paul writing said, but we all with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of God, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. And I wonder sometimes, what spirit are we of? What spirit have we got operating in us? What spirit is handling us? What spirit is motivating us? What spirit is prompting us to preach like we preach? What spirit is causing us to do what we do? And I feel a check here today. And I feel a burden here today. And I feel a responsibility on me today. Hallelujah. I'm not young anymore. Certainly not old, but I'm not young anymore. Amen. And so I feel a burden on my heart. What is pressing us? Amen. I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired of circles drawn so tight that a man doesn't have room to be himself. Amen. In the presence of God. Oh, I'm getting tired of, of everything that doesn't have. It's not smoke coming out of my chimney. There's no fire in it at all. I'm getting tired of hearing about the blessing of God somewhere and somebody over here with a negative connotation trying to stomp it out and kill the work of the Lord. Oh, God help us. I'm deeper than I wanted to go. I'm, I'm deeper than I intended to go. But Lord, help me today. It's time for us as the apostolic church uh, get that stubbornness out of us. Uh, get that stubbornness out of us. Uh, get that 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 boneheaded stubbornness out of us uh, and stand up one more time uh, with a broken heart before God. Uh, thank you again Elder Johns. Uh, to the pure all things are pure. Uh, come on my brother. I've got a hand reached out to help you. If you're not where I'm at let me preach a little while and pray a little while. I'll help you get there. Let me talk with you a while. Let me work on you a while. Amen. Let me be your friend for a while. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet if you don't mind. Let's lift our hearts to the Lord. Let's ask God to help us today. Oh God, I'm closing when I don't feel through. Oh Holy Ghost, help us. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. Let's get back to where we started. Let's get back to the purity of the Word of God. Let's get back to the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the help of the Holy Ghost. Let's get back to younger being submitted to the elder. Let's get back to walking deferential and carefully in the presence of the Lord. Come on, brethren. Come on, church. Let's get back to that place of relationship in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm not where I want to be, but thank God. God, I'm not where I used to be. Somebody keep preaching. Somebody keep helping me. Somebody keep dealing with my spirit. I want to go there. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, brethren. 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 Come on, church. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost here today. In the name of the Lord. 
In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. The spirit of iniquity doth already work. The spirit of iniquity doth already work. The spirit of iniquity doth already work. Oh God. I'm kind of hung up on this for a moment. I'm kind of hung up on this a moment. And I keep coming back to it. But when we in the ministry allow in ourselves what we forbid in our church. When we do in the presence of our friends what we would rebuke men in our church for doing. We're showing ourselves that we're God. We're setting up in our temple. Something's not right. I feel the Lord. I feel the Lord. Oh, would you like to pray today? Would you like to pray today? Maybe we just want to come and stand around the front of this building. Oh, God. How about it, saints of God? I didn't mean to work over the ministry in front of the saints. I didn't mean to at all. But, oh, I feel something in my heart. You know where I'm at, God. How about you ladies? Come on, there's room, ladies. <laughs> Come on, ladies, there's room. <laughs> you good men, you good men, you good saints of God. Come on, there's room. We're trying to draw nigh to God. Give me a pure heart, 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 God. Like Give me a pure heart, God. Give me a pure heart, God. If we condemn tail bearing among the saints, come on, let's pray. We've got to condemn it in our own hearts. If he that soweth discord is an abomination. We can't be guilty of such abominations. If we rebuke others for touching the anointed in the ministry, can we suffer the same rebuke from the Spirit when we lift up our hands? David, come on out of the cave of Abdullah. Hold up that piece of the hem of the garment and repent, David. Like him, to be like Jesus.